One, take one. Um, okay, hello you guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Lizzie Gordon. And what a fucking nightmare this show was to bring to you all today. You manifested the nightmare. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? On the docket, you literally wrote at the top of the docket before we ever got to the airport this morning, nightmare travel stories of for Lizzie and Chris. And guess well, what, guys? It was nothing short of a fucking nightmare. Thanks for manifesting it, our sweet king. It's because every single time you travel to Colorado, it seems like there's 20 minutes on the podcast about an airport horror story. I wasn't trying to manifest the doom <laughs> that is now our reality. And luckily, although I've been spiraling and trying to set up this setup for hours, I wasn't the one that had to board a plane, wake up early, only to Hold on, to hold on. You're to... jumping the shark. Can I tell okay. you the full series of how yes. fucked up my day was? Yeah, please bring us along. Okay, so when we travel to Colorado... We We'd take the same trip in and out in one day. 7 a.m., leave Burbank. 7 p.m., leave Denver, get back to Burbank. And it's fucking wild, by the way. The I cannot believe that you guys are willing to travel in, film two podcast episodes, and travel out in the same day. Like, you guys are not of my humanity. We're, like, super strong people, and I really appreciate that you're admitting that on air. Well, Lizzie always, no, because I always profusely apologize because I feel like it's abuse, like low key. And Lizzie goes, well, no, because it's really not that much different than traveling to and from Calabasas twice. It's really not. It's actually exactly the same amount of time. It's exactly the same amount of time. Uh, okay, so what happened? So I go to bed and I am meticulous about this. I set an alarm for 5 a.m., and then I put my phone down, I pick up my book, and I start reading, and I read myself to sleep, and I'm sleeping through the night. I wake up at one point, and I'm like, ugh, so annoying. Like, I got to go back to bed. Like, maybe I should check the time. And then my body's like, don't check the time, because then you're not going to be able to go back to sleep, because you're going to be tripping about what time it is and how little hours you have left. And then I was like, just check the time. I look. It's 5.04 a.m. My alarm has been deleted. It's like it, it's not even in my phone is not turned on. It's as if it never fucking existed in my phone. <laughs> I was like, what in the fuck are the odds of that? Like, what is that? It's just gone. It's just gone. It's like someone went into my phone and deleted the alarm from ever existing. Because well, I know I set the alarm and I even said, like, don't forget your yogurt in the fridge, bitch. Like it was literally wild, labeled like yogurt, bitch. The wild thing about this, though, is you're like, I was being so meticulous. Meticulous to me is I set four alarms, especially when I have to be up early. I do not trust my <laughs> iPhone to save my life. And I can't believe that you have so much trust in our technology. I mean, it's never it's never self-deleted before. Like, what the fuck is that shit? So and then I'm like, I'm like, literally, I get it. Joe's driving me. Joe never drives me to the airport. Last night, I was like, I swear to fucking God, you or James has to take me to the airport and pick me up. I don't care which one of you does it, but one of you is fucking doing it. I refuse. I fucking refuse to walk tomorrow. I'm just not doing it. I can't do it. So Joe, for the first time in his fucking life, has agreed to drive me to the airport. We get in his car. Ryland, we hit every single red light at 5.15 in the morning. Every single red light. There's no one else on the road. Joe's like, what the fuck is this? I have never... Joe's literally like, never in my life have I hit this many red lights. It's like 12 in a row. I'm like, this is a sign. What? Then out of nowhere on his like shuffle playlist, it starts playing... Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. And I was like, <sighs> I was like, baby, like, I'm not trying to be crazy, but I'm going to need you to turn that music off right now because it's making me feel like I'm about to die. He was like, what? And I was like, my alarm deleted itself. We've hit every fucking red light. Like, not knocking on heaven's door. Like, the universe is trying to tell me I'm not getting on that plane and going to Colorado because I'm going to fucking die if I do. And because it's an hour ahead here, I wake up way after the fact. And I wake up to a text from Lizzie just being like, my alarm didn't go off. It deleted itself. And with no follow-up, by the way. Like, it's been an hour had passed. No follow-up. So I wake up and I reply. I'm like, so you missed your flight? And Chris is, like, on his way to me without you? No. <sighs> but then, wait for this. We get to the airport. And they're like, we will not board this plane because we oversold two tickets. So until two people <laughs> surrender, we're not boarding the plane. And we were like, oh, my. My god so then we're like late to board the plane and then finally it's time to stand in line and when i checked in for the flight yesterday i picked a window seat i like a window seat because i like to pop my laptop out and do some work on the flight and i don't want to be disturbed by people having to go to the bathroom because it's a fucking nightmare to re like reorchestrate my computer mm -hmm. and my headset and everything and i was going to finish my vlog today 
And then we get in line to start boarding and literally my boarding pass has changed and now says, no seat has been assigned to you. Go see a ticketing agent. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, I'm not getting on this plane. I should not get on this plane. And then I'm also livid because Chris didn't even check in for the flight. I checked Chris's fucking ass in for the flight and he got my seat. And then when they assigned me a new seat, it's the aisle. And I was like, son of a bitch. And Chris goes, I'll trade seats with you because he's being so sweet. And I'm like, I don't thanks, Chris, dude. Are you sure? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, because it is the seat that I fucking signed up for anyway. And you didn't even check in for this fight. I checked your ass in for this fight. And I, what, can I just paint the picture of me at home? So I'm downstairs <laughs> before. I, and like, I thought you were getting on the plane because Chris is texting me. He's sending me videos of you like in a group huddle on the plane with like four other passengers. I was like, what oh. is she telling them about her script play no. by play? No, this is what you've missed now. So Chris gives me his window seat. He sits down in my seat, which looks like it might have had extra leg room. <laughs> and he's on the aisle and maybe not. It's not even. Was it a full aisle? Were there two people sitting next to you? Okay. But they're so slight that it's like no one was there next to him. This is a huge family. I'm sitting next to four fucking people. Two people in the front with an infant and then two elderly people, the grandparents behind. And they're like... They're like Santa and Mrs. Claus. And I'm oh. on the fucking window crammed in and it's so tight, Ryland, that I couldn't even open my little tray table to put my laptop on it without touching this man's knee. And as I'm getting in there, they're like, oh, we're going to talk the whole time. Like, we're super friendly. You can tease us all these things. And I'm like, I just don't want to be seen by you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start talking about how the baby's gassy. The mom smelling. Like, oh, she smells shitty. Like, I'm going to go deal with my baby's shit diaper right now. And I'm like, oh, my God, what? And then the parents are like, well, the dad's like, well, I blame your side of the family for that because y'all are some gassy people. They're like, yeah, we're gassy. We're a and gassy so family. Then <laughs> I'm still sitting on my couch meditating when I get the call. I'm like trying to calm myself down because I had the Sunday scaries. It's different now that like I have you guys flying in. I haven't prepared for two episodes at once in a long time. I have these documents that I have like all crazily organized and then you call me and you're like they're <laughs> they're like there's a problem with our plane some of the a, a part of it is malfunctioning and I was like I need to get off this fucking <laughs> flight God has tried to save me at every fucking intervention period that it fucking could and I'm still sitting here for my <laughs> weekly rate on the fucking sip like I'm dying for this and then thank god which is a good one by the way no it's saying. a good rate i'm not complaining about the rate but it's not worth my life like let's and be you know real. what else isn't fucking worth all of this is the amount that airplane tickets cost to get you guys fucking here it's like i'm not even making money doing this podcast because the airline tickets were so fucking expensive i used all of my credit card points and i was like lizzie goes this flight they're delayed it for four hours and we don't even know if it will happen then and i was like well these flights are non-refundable because i bought them with my fucking credit card points and then the other thing that's so annoying is I have to go back to the kiosk I'm by the way the jacket I'm wearing is a bright red fur jacket so the woman I see at the kiosk because I'm like so I don't have a seat on this flight she's like what's your name like gives me all my stuff and then um I go back to see the same woman she goes who are you I'm like but what do you mean who, who am I dude I'm wearing a bright red fucking fur coat she's like what can I do for you and I'm like the same thing you've done for the other 50 fucking passengers that have been in front of me in this line who all just got off the flight that you guys fucking delayed for four hours. It's the same. What do you what is the disconnect here? I don't and understand. And my Karen ass like starts to flip on and I'm like, Elizabeth, don't tell don't let them tell you that they're not going to give you a refund for the flight because there's a there's still one in four hours. You have to say you missed your meeting in Colorado and demand channel me in Vegas. And she's like, I don't know if I'll do that, but I will be stern as I can. I, like I, I find that in LA, if I tell anyone like my boss is really crazy, like they're always like, oh, let us help you. Because I think everyone in LA has had like a horrible boss. And I'm not saying you're a horrible boss, but the, like even when I'm my, I will tell people like when I want something, I'll be like, sorry, this salad's for my boss and she's a real fucking nightmare and she needs all these extra dressings on the side and she has all these weird substitutes. Like, please don't fuck it up. She'll beat me to death. And it's like, no, I'm me. It's me. I'm the problem. And it's me. I have this crazy thing about our virtual episodes where it's like before we were doing it on this recording service and it was through our webcams and I was trying to like connect the computer or the camera to the computer to all of these things. And I was like, Elizabeth, I'll have a breakdown if I'm putting out a less than stellar show. To me, it's not worth it to put out an episode at all if it's shitty quality. So we're trying this new thing where like Chris is recording Lizzie in real time in California. I'm recording myself on a nice camera and we're just going to hope that this all syncs together and works. And if so, then we we have like as close to an in-person setup as you could possibly get. 
I don't mind it. Well, it's very okay, odd what though about- because Chris can't hear anything and he's standing right there. And because, well, because I have the headset in, he's like, he just doesn't know, but he's still giving me like sweet little laughs on his end. Like when I say something funny, which is kind of nice. Because I have Lizzie and FaceTime in my phone with headphones so I can hear her. And then I have my podcast headphones over <laughs> the iPhone headphones and it's just a nightmare. But I hope that this works out well for us in case there's a pinch in the future. And I will say like coming back to Colorado when a lot of our work is in LA, it is challenging. Especially like when I say like the flight itself makes the podcast like financially a hobby if we're flying everyone out every week you know what I mean yeah I don't know if I'm comfortable being a podcast hobbyist (laughs) truth be told (laughs) there are too many podcast hobbyists out in this world and I don't know that I could be it's the only differentiating the only differentiating factor for you is like when you tell people you have a podcast at least like you do make a living from I always feel like I have to back that up like no like it it's a paid job Uh, like like, I do like I'm a hired talent (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> there are people that listen my favorite um, thing is no matter what whatever you call i'm like i have to take this it's my boss <laughs> and it's never about work <laughs> it's always elizabeth what do you want you've sent me 25 texts in a row <laughs> and it's hard because just as we've gotten as close as we've ever been i just leave you it's and fucked. you know what was the most flattering part about this? Because we have been having a lot of fun. Like I did tell her as I was like leaving, I was like, nobody makes me laugh until I cry as much as you. Because it is true. Like we went to like get fucking tea at the tea room and I was like crying from laughing so hard. And like you don't find that many friends in life that just that, that make you cry when yeah. you laugh so hard, like frequently, you know. Um, and so Lizzie flattered me a lot by saying that uh, she went to Target the day I left and she was bawling in public Target. Oh, it was pathetic. I was literally <laughs> walking around the Target by your house just like, and then they're not going to come back. And it's going to be different. I was on the phone with my friend Haley and she's like, why are you crying, dude? And I was like, I don't know. It's just sad. It's just sad. We have so much fun. It's the laughter. <laughs> And also, it's like, it's in the one place where if I were to be recognized without you, it would be there because it's the Calabasas target. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Raylan, you just miss him. Like, I'm like walking around looking, like get buying a book and a sports bra. Like, that's it. <laughs> Pretty sad. Pretty sad. Um, so we got back to Colorado and I just, of course, you know, like, I mean, I'm not, these aren't like complaints on a large level, but the moths are migrating. Like if any of you watched my vlogs last year, you watched me like clean out the garage because what happens is the moths are migrating to Canada (laughs) and they like come at such great strengths. It's unimaginable. Like I can enter, enter a clip here. Like we had somebody staying up in the barn and we walked up into the barn and it's not just like moths it's like an infestation but there's nothing you can do about it because they're migrating and when they take a break they like to like get their and they're so fucking nasty and they're so fucking big (laughs) but they can fit in the tiniest of cracks and there's certain places that they can get into more than others in the house and i like called the guy that is the whatever the terminator master yes and he was like yep like other insects there's nothing you can do. There's no spray that's going to keep them away. I went on Amazon. I got all of these things that like attract. And they say you're not supposed to kill the moss because like the ecosystem they're good for. Right. Like nobody's proven to me what they do for our ecosystem. <laughs> and if they're in my house sure with an infestation, I want them fucking dead. I don't care what you guys think. You can cancel me for wanting the moss dead. I just fucking hate it because they're nasty. And then you try to kill it. If you miss, then they start flying around and hitting you in the face. And you're just like, I'm trying to brush my teeth and there's moss everywhere. So I got these things on Amazon where it's like it puts out a light and the light attracts them and it's supposed to like suck them into a thing and then a fan murders them. And (laughs) it literally doesn't work. They fly into it and then they fly right back out of it like it's a fucking toy. And I'm just like... What the fuck is going on here? You have to get one of those zapper lights where it's a light, but it's surrounded by like an electro field. And when it hits the field, it just goes and kills it and they drop. I saw them in a bug's life. And is that safe to have in the house or I have to have it like right outside the house? I think you want it outside the house. But if they're in your house, I'd put it in the house too. Just don't be like, I don't think it'll, I don't know, man. I'm not a doctor. Something that was interesting 
was uh, getting the alpaca sheared. I had never experienced something quite like that. And I know, like, I didn't vlog it. I have video clips because I thought people would be like, that's abusive because they don't actually know, like, what's going on. Yeah, you and, have to shear the alpaca. And yes, in fact, you have to shear the alpaca or they'll have heat stroke or heat, they'll overdose from being too hot because they're for, like, for their health, you have to shear the alpacas yearly. And, but because they're such, like, skittishy animals, you do have to, like, manhandle um, them, throw them on the floor, hold their no, hooves. It's a sit very, on their necks, I have a video of me doing it. You, you bring them out and you gently, somebody's at the front, somebody's at the back, and you, you have to pull them and, like, gently lay them down as they get sheared and they brush their teeth, they give them their vaccines, they, uh, Tie, they trim down their nails so really it's for the overall health of the alpacas but it was quite the experience and like so crazy i always thought when you see what's going on chris is moving a chair oh i thought when i saw the videos of it i was like oh this is abusive but when you're doing it in person it feels less harmful i mean it's not harmful none of the alpacas were being hurt but it just isn't as intense as it looks via video um but now they look like little aliens and they're running around and i'm just like oh my gosh you guys are the cutest little beings in the entire world and so that's something positive um with all my moths that are um just circulating around me i'm literally watching one like fluttering up and down as we speak in your house yes they're in the house that's such a funny problem to have <laughs> and the cats the cats will kill them but they won't eat them so they just leave them dead with their guts splattered <laughs> what and i'm like what good are you guys oh he'll probably fly over here in just a second you'll probably get a view of him fluttering in the back and it will make you want to barf i literally i was finding a new setup for us in colorado because that fireplace is also like a moth aquarium like it's just like <laughs> they can't they got themselves in but they can't, they can't get, get themselves get out. out so there's like Fifty dead inside the fireplace floor, but there's also like fifty flying inside. So I was like, we can't even record in our normal place because mm -hmm. there's a moth aquarium behind us, and if anyone's eating their dinner while listening to us, they're just gonna be watching disgusting fucking moths flying. That's fucking nuts. I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want some good news? Yeah, I want some great news. I don't have butt cancer. Oh, wow. So you did go to the butt doctor. No, you that's can't not hear it, but I just did the crowd clapping on my end. Oh, I we okay. Yeah, I didn't hear it. You don't need to. You'll hear it when you're editing, Daddy. See, that's the one thing. But yeah, so I went to the doctor. I read uh, a few weeks ago. I read an article in the Daily Mail that said something like a lot of people are getting colorectal. Well, we discussed it at yeah. length on this podcast. I mean, I'm just giving a little a little update. A lot of young people are getting colorectal cancer. I had some of the symptoms of colorectal cancer, so I started tripping, and um, I decided to just book an appointment, go to the doctor. I haven't had a physical in a while. So I go to the doctor. They took my blood, bro. I still have a bruise on my arm. I don't know if you can see it, but it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, no, no colorectal cancer over here. And so they check it through your blood work, not sticking something f that's freezing up your ass. Um, uh, the guy was like, what are your symptoms? And I gave him my symptoms and he was like, it's not butt cancer. If it was butt cancer, you'd be probably super skinny. And I was like, okay, that's offensive. <laughs> And then he was like, uh, your other symptoms are indicative of an anal fissure, which is what I've known I've had for a long time. Well, why don't you get that anal fissure cream so that you can finally heal it? Well, he said, because it heals on its own. He was like, these are some practices. Not unless you strain it. Well, that's what he's, or, he, he was like, he didn't want to go into the anal creams until we had first tried these like natural things drinking more water uh more fibrous diet and butthole soaking so i've been soaking my butthole in the tub and mm. also like if i do have to say like when you're right you're right ryland and i was talking to you and i think it's on the podcast about how i'll sit on the toilet and just scroll for hours and he's like do you sit on the toilet for a long time and it was like yes he's like yes. well don't do that because that strains your anal floor or whatever mm -hmm. so you're literally only supposed to sit on the toilet when it's like about to come out of you and you're supposed to get up right after especially if you're struggling with hemorrhoids or a fissure yeah so if you got a fissure or a hemorrhoid or whatever like don't be doing your doom scrolling on the toilet get up and go to bed girl you crazy and Let's has go. that been hard for you because that's like a sacred place i'm sure well, no, like I've been trying to be on TikTok less anyways because I'm fucking terrified after Shane's thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like reading a lot more. I've read three books this month. Wow. Yeah, they're all Grady Hendrix. I'm fucking obsessed. 
I have nothing. I don't have anything to add. It's okay. I'm, I'm just saying if you're into horror and you like female centric stories, Grady Hendrix is good for it. And so how did the butt talk doctor turn into you selling your shit for money? Oh, well, I'm not officially oh. selling my shit for money yet. And what? They're you not- scream texted at me 30 times throughout the past week. And I said, I don't want to hear about it because A, it's disgusting and B, save it for the podcast if you have to tell me at all. Listen, everybody's got a side hustle. Mine's going to be selling my own shit to science. It is what it is. I was- and you said you can make up to six figures? Dude, you can make like 180K selling your shits. What? Yeah, because it's like if if I'm approved, I had to go through this like lengthy like questionnaire about You're full blown submitting? Oh, I submitted. It's past tense girl. I submitted. I'll know within six months if they want my shits. They probably six months won't because I'm too old. Time to wait. I aged That's out of long... selling my shit. They want younger, they want 20 somethings. I'm like, bitch, what? I'm a 30 something who's got like great like I look young, I feel young. Take my poops, guys do you okay it's like over 500 dollars a shit and you shit at least once or twice a day right so if i send them two shits a day at 500 bucks a pop every day that's how do you know they're money. gonna want that many though like w- wouldn't they get one from you and have all they need to know what they need to know no i think that they want a uh, like a range of samples over time so that they can see how something is or something i don't even God, know I'm- Imagine how awful that job is. Here's the, I mean, oh yeah, shift sifting through shit's probably awful, but like low key, I don't give a fuck what they're doing with my poop. Like you can have it. Like I'm not. <gasps> oh my god. What? Oh my god. I just what? realized I have been warning people forever not to give their shit away because reptilians might be taking it so that they can replicate them. And I just fucking realized that I signed up to like it took 500 bucks for me to be like, yeah, take my shit reptilians. I'm a fucking <laughs> moron. I might still do it if they approve I me. still don't understand where you're going with that, but I'm just fine. saying I heard that reptilians take your poop so that they can replicate you and now I'm just I don't understand the together. whole rep- Tillion thing in general. All you need to know is don't give people your poop that you don't know. And now I'm realizing like, oh my God. Anything for money. Yeah. Well, that's how they get you. Wow. Yikes. That's terrifying. I got to call Shannon after this and make sure she's not giving her poop to science. What? This is something you and all your friends are doing. (laughs) No, I've just told Shannon never to give her poop to someone and she's like what and I'm just, I'm just, okay but can you tell me how you came across this and you didn't TikTok, look into bro, what i come across everything on tiktok every fucking clothing sale anytime anytime i see fucking anything every time i'm like you heard of this i've heard of it on tiktok ryland and what are they doing like what are they doing with it you i didn't literally even look don't that far know i it? just saw six figures and i was like sign me up daddy take my poop yikes <laughs> yikes Okay, so how was Joe's birthday? I could not believe you exposed him on the internet. I know. He said I could post him on my Instagram story. I was like, that you know, I don't is have to hide wild. Your face. He had been drinking. I don't know. You guys looked, did he regret it after it was live when he woke up the next day? I do wonder if he knows. If he knows. Yeah. Does he not follow you on Instagram? I don't know. I know <laughs> he does. He, like, I think he follows me on Instagram, but I don't know that he looks at me on Instagram. So us going to the Dodgers game really did inspire you to take him to the Dodgers game on his birthday. Oh, yeah. But, and his birthday sucked, by the way. Why? <laughs> Every step of the way, shit went wrong. So, like, on the day of his birthday, we were going to go to Universal Studios and we were going to go see The Flash at City Walk and then go get dinner at this place called Hi-Ho that I just found, but I'd never mm-hmm. been to. And it's in the Sportsman's Lodge shopping center. So I thought it was going to be, like, a cute... You and I almost went on my birthday, actually. Yeah, that place is super cute. It's like the Beverly Hills of Studio City, that little complex. Really cute. And it just, like, families are everywhere. It's a good vibe. And they're shopping. So we wake up in the morning. We're like, all right, I'm, I go, I'm going to buy your Universal Season Pass right now, and we'll go to the park. Rylan, the park is fucking sold out. I can't buy tickets. I can't believe you would dare even try after our experience. It, like, you couldn't, we were literally fucking... Like, it was so packed, you couldn't even move when we went to Universal Studios. I will never again go in the summer. No, it was wild. So that got canceled. And he was like, I try really hard not to get my hopes up, but I was really excited to go. So <sighs> then we change our tickets from City Walk, because why the fuck would we go to City Walk to see The Flash? We, we'll see it in Burbank. And the one that we go to in Burbank, the 
air conditioning's broken and Joe <sighs> runs hot. So this is his fucking nightmare. And he, it's, we get into the theater and for some reason this woman has decided to bring her small ass child who's like two years old to a three hour fucking movie. The kid's mm. screaming through the whole thing. Just like, no, no, no. Saying no through the whole movie. It was wild. Joe's livid. Joe already hates going to the movies anyway. So like this was like a thing for him yeah, to do. A lot, yeah. You know he hates the movie theater. Yeah. But he wanted to see The Flash and I was like, let's go for your birthday. And then it was a fucking nightmare. And then we go to dinner and it's not a sit down restaurant. It's a you order at the front and then they bring it oh. out to you. And there's nowhere to sit because we're all, it's a Friday at the Sportsman's Lodge. So every table is occupied by families. Mm. So then we can't sit anywhere. And then after that, we like go to another bar so he can get like a fancy drink. And I got a mocktail and it was a fucking nightmare. Just everything, every step of the way went wrong. So then we go to the Dodgers game, but we didn't think ahead. We just were like, oh, well, it'll take us 45 minutes to get there. It did not take us 45 minutes to get there. It took an hour and a half to get there. We missed half the game. And then we spent a majority of the game in line to get nachos, a Dodger dog, and a beer and a Diet Coke. Which yeah, cost- do you not remember? I did that on purpose when we went. But the thing is, when we got there at the same time that you and me got there and that's why you leave after traffic because it's not worth it to sit in traffic i mean i, I don't wish know next time me. we're just going hella early and then remember how like when you and i went like the security's like all right let's go let's go let's go get the fuck out get the fuck out <laughs> Yeah, I remember you shaming me and my family. So for we were seated. 20 minutes. We were basically seated where you and I were sat. And we come out, and this gnarly fucking security guard's like, let's go, let's go this way, this way, this way. And they're ushering us out of an exit that we did not come in through. And we're on the seventh fucking floor. And mm. we came in and parked on the bottom floor and went in the same entrance that you and I went in. And I was like, I don't think we should take this exit because I don't know how to find the car from here. I don't even know if it leads to the car from here. Like, I'm not sure how this stadium works at all. I've been fucking one time, maybe twice, and once was for a COVID testing. So I was like, I don't think we should go out here. And she's like, let's go, let's go. And I was like, okay, bitch, I'm going. Like, chill your fucking bill, what? And I'm like, and my honestly, Rylan, like my brain is just like a little bit scrambled at this point because like, it's, everything else went wrong it's too much you know and and the dodgers lost horribly it was like 16 to 0 what a bummer it was crazy <laughs> how horrible oh, and the, the 68 dollar nachos were rancid the cheese was bad it had like did pickles. we pay that much for nachos yeah i paid that much for the food and the dodger dog is not what it used to be that is like a fucking baby dick now like that shit sucked so we well, like everything every step of the way it was just like a fucking bummer and then they kick us out of this door that's not the door we're supposed to go out of and believe it or not we got lost for an hour and a fucking half we had to walk out of the fucking stadium down to the fucking freeway walk on the outside of the stadium go up and down multiple hills and every time i'm like this doesn't feel right this is not where we came in one of the guys who works there was like no this is right this is where you want to be and i was like this is not where we left the car. And did you have Joe's car? Because that you could at least yeah, but, find yourself to him. And we kept Tesla. showing people who worked there the place where we were parked. And they were like, <laughs> that's not right. And we were like, no, that's right. And then Joe's got a bad knee. It was all fucking. He got on a bird because he didn't. He had a bad knee. The bird fucking charged him a hundred extra dollars because you can't ride a bird up to the Coliseum what yeah we just rolled out today's podcast is sponsored by hello fresh and with hello fresh you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep or right when you need them you skip trips to the grocery store and you can count on hello fresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable and this summer hello fresh is here to take the work out of eating well reach your goals with delicious calorie smart and protein smart lunch and dinner options plus there are new vegan recipes too hello fresh's seasonal ingredients are picked at peak ripeness and travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days for fresh flavor in every bite. And if you need dinner ready, like right now, look for quick and easy recipes on the HelloFresh menu, including fast and fresh options ready in just 15 minutes or less. HelloFresh has changed the way I'm able to eat dinner, especially on a busy work week. I can know that I can walk downstairs, find a recipe that is sitting there from HelloFresh that can be ready in 15 minutes that's also delicious and healthy for me and my family. I also love that Green Chef 
Chef, who we've previously worked with, is now owned by HelloFresh. So with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I actually switched between the brands and now all of you can also enjoy both brands at a discount with me. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TheSip16 and use code TheSip16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash TheSip16 and use code TheSip16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. I love HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Okay. Okay. Here we go again. We're back. We're back. And so you found your car? Uh, yeah. Eventually we found the car. And it was... Oh, no. Hold on. My phone just dropped. I can't see my baby boy. There he is. Hey, daddy. And did you guys have birthday sex? Are you ovulating? Are you off birth control? <laughs> What's going on? Is That's this too personal? Thing. I mean, I, I bought a thermometer because all of my girlfriends are like, take your temperature. Use these apps. Piss on this strip. Do this, do that. So I bought a thermometer. I keep it by the side of my bed. It's also called something like a basal thermometer or something. And I was like, well, if it's not just a regular thermometer, I'd probably stick it in my pussy, right? Like, I just honestly, honest to goodness, I was like, I'm going to put this basal thermometer in my puss. Like, that's what it's for. <laughs> um, and then my friends were like, yeah, you just have to take your temperature every morning before you get out of bed. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to stick this in my puss in front of my husband and my dogs. Like, that's a little demoralizing. And they were and like, what happens when? When you're ovulating, what what, what happens? Uh, the temper your temperature changes, I guess. But the front the, in your pussy. No, that's the big reveal. Uh. <laughs> you don't you don't take your pussy temperature. You just put it in your mouth. Oh, it's, it's a it's a mouth thing. So you and is your temperature lower or higher? <laughs> I think your temperature would be higher, but I'm not entirely sure. Can't you just get the things where you pee on it and it says yes or no? I did get those strips, um, and I fully intend to pee on them daily i got an app i'm pissing on it i'm trying to figure out because we're right now we're using it as a form of birth control and actually a lot of my girlfriends have been using this method for birth control for like years and it just seems like a better way to be in touch with my body without putting chemicals in it like birth control to manage it so if i if you track your ovulation cycle you just can't get pregnant when you're ovulating without when you're not ovulating well and also it can sometimes take a, a few weeks to a couple of months to start ovulating after birth control for some women, correct? Yeah, I've heard that some women uh, don't ovulate immediately after going off the pill, and I've been on it for years, so we went off of it just to see, like, do I ovulate? And so I what's the time period, like, how big of a time frame is there that you can't have sex when you are ovulating? Is it like four days before and four days after? I don't know. Well, then how are you using it as a form of birth control if you don't even know? I mean, it's just if I'm ovulating, we don't have sex. I know, but and I have how long strips. do you ovulate for? I don't know. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay. So <laughs> and I was but then if you keep having was... sex, you might get pregnant because you don't understand how it works and neither do I. No, I do because I'm peeing on the strips and it's saying, girl, you ain't ovulating oh, or, it's, okay. or so... it's an error. Uh... <laughs> and because I'm behind it, it's probably an error. And so you're starting in July, right? No. August. I can't keep up with you. I know. August. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know the difference between a month and a half and just August. I don't know why you can't just... Well, whatever. I, I'm not keeping any baby I conceive in July. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I'm done talking babies with you. Uh, something that blew my mind this week that like I actually was flabbergasted by Lizzie hit me with the text message and she, it was this image and the text with the image was you really don't appreciate having a normal sized butt crack until you see two people on the outer edges of the spectrum like this and it's this woman with like the tiniest no, butt crack you've ever this seen woman Rylan it's Yoko fucking Ono and John Legend John Legend uh, I'm such an idiot they're John famous Lennon. people what they're famous people they're in this photo it's John Lennon and Yoko Ono and John wow. Lennon has one of the world's longest fucking butt cracks. And Yoko Ono has a short butt crack. And they post, they shared this photo famously of them naked from behind. And I'm like, I was bold. There's no way I you just, look at that picture and think, let's go. Let's full send it. It's like, that I was never, a long butt crack, John. I didn't know butt cracks varied like this. I, for some reason, I didn't know there was a spectrum of butt cracks. I just thought butt cracks were butt cracks. And that was that. I didn't know butt crack could go to your mid back. <laughs> I didn't know. Either, but I guess I kind of did because I used to think like, oh, that person's got a high butt crack, but I never thought in my mind that their butt would go lower. You know, I it's like an iceberg no, butt crack. 
Yeah, I had no idea all butt cracks weren't created equally. It's crazy. Yoko Ono's short little, like, honestly, I might not be exaggerating. It might be like a three inch butt crack and that's it. Yeah, it's like that butt crack's got a split for the shit. <laughs> I don't think I have a weird butt crack. I think I have a normal butt crack, but now I'm like, We should compare in person normal? next time just to see, like, we don't spread eagle, but, but just we'll measure like. Them. Yeah, we'll just measure our butt cracks to make sure, like, everything checks out. <laughs> that's the clickbait. Come back next week to find out how long our butt cracks are. Uh, that's pretty nice. I, I would like to know, honestly. I'll wait for us to do it in person. I'm, like, scared now. Like, what if I have a long butt crack? What if I've got a freakishly long butt crack instead of just being, like, average, run-of-the-mill butt crack? Like, what if this is the only place I'm abnormal? Have, you know. have you had anybody anybody complain? Nobody's ever like complained about my butt crack or told me it was like large or small. I guess it's just never been a topic I've ever heard anyone talk about. That's why I'm so flabbergasted by it. I mean, I do wonder if someone would be like, whoa, or if that's like mean. Like, I wonder if Yoko Ono and John Lennon were ever like, something's up. You know? Like, I feel like you'd see John Lennon, Lennon's out of his swimsuit, even at a high, even if he wore it high. Yeah. Okay. Well... Lizzie was texting me about the idol and I was like, girl, I, I fell off after episode one. I could barely finish episode one. I'm never going back ever again. And we're never giving it airtime on the podcast ever again either. Because I just, <laughs> even hearing the name now just makes me like snore. I'm so fucking bored. I don't want to hear about it anymore. And I cannot believe you're still watching it. I'm not allowed to watch it in the shared spaces of our house anymore. Joe's like, it's disgusting and it's trash and I don't want it anywhere near me. And I'm just like, I get it, man. I watched it last night and I was like... What is why are these people dumb? Why, dumb? What's bringing you back? I think it's like because I hate it. <laughs> like I really hate it, and I really hate Sam Levinson. Like I really fucking hate that guy. So I'm pirating his show and watching it. So he's like not getting oh. my view, but he mm. is getting my hate. And it's honestly, it's so bad at this point that it's like I don't know that I can even come back and hate this. <laughs> Like it's like okay. I watched the weekend jack off in a ro a Rodeo Drive changing room and I don't know why. Hmm. That's weird. Well, let's just never speak of it ever again. Yeah. R.I.P. the idol, you piece of shit. Yeah, I was like, I'd rather talk about the Kardashians all day, every day, which I'm not caught up with the Kardashians, but I, I guess, and this is what's really sad is Chris doesn't have a microphone right now because of it's so oh. complicated, this setup. I can um, tell you what Chris told me. Well, he might just have to come talk into your mic for a second and you can prompt some questions. But like, I broke the news to Lizzie that Courtney broke the news that she was pregnant to, I guess, the world yeah. that she was having a Kravis baby. And she held up the sign and it was like, I, we're pregnant Tra or I'm Travis, pregnant. Travis, I'm pregnant. And so at first, because I'm stupid, even though I coined myself as a Blink-182 fan, I was like, this is the most attention-grabbing, weird, like unconnected like out of like i'd be so mad if my spouse announced something to me like that that was so intimate because this is so not intimate yeah but now uh chris let me know that it's actually just a reference to the blink 182 music video yeah and she's doing exactly that and i think it's now since come to light that he already knew prior to her holding up this sign yeah they the family already knew that she was pregnant this was how she announced they announced it to the world and so do you think she must be like three months along now i mean i guess i don't know you know how i feel about it i'm like the second we're pregnant we're pregnant right interesting so this will be the seventh between the two of them holy shit that's a lot of fucking kids dude i know the seventh they, well that's what i read and you know us we're not very factual on this show no i can barely fucking count bro <laughs> and so yeah i'm glad that i i realized that it was an homage to the music video before i like came on here and said how unintimate it was yeah. like and stood like so firm in my beliefs only to have had people then like no it's a call back to the music video because yeah. i was like i started going off on the text messages and you were like go off daddy and <laughs> then i'm glad i found out before the podcast just yeah, all no, i have to say Chris was at the show and he said that Courtney was pretty close to him. Was really? physically close Bring to Chris him. Bring Chris over. Chris, Let come Chris here. just. Okay. Come, come over here, Chris, on this side. Hello. Oh. Hi, Hi Christopher. Hi. Hello. <laughs> okay, so first of all, this Blink 182 concert, like, I, I coined myself as a Blink 182 fan, but I feel like this was like 
so hardcore. Like, I, were like people moshing at this concert? This bitch crowd surfed. I crowd surfed. You crowd I surfed? Moshed. Yeah, during all the small things, I crowd surfed. Uh, and they, I felt bad because when they went came to the front row, that's where like all like uh, closer the front to row the tends mic to be a lot of girls. Lean, lean down. The front row tends to be a lot of girls. And so there were a lot of like short, sweet girls in the front row singing along. That's where so I'd be. It was fine until like I got there, and then they were all like, "Oh no, we have to carry him." And then I was just like smushing little little girls. And then <laughs> the security had to like pull me off of them, and I was like, "I'm killing them right now. I'm so sorry." Um, and they pulled me down and like around to another side of the pit or whatever. And I re-enter, and then there's, like, a commotion happening and a guy with a really large camera. And I'm like, what's going on? And then I just see uh, Kourtney Kardashian walk up. And I'm like, what is happening? Could you smell her? Did you know it was her? Could you I, tell? Not right away, but uh, but then she, like, held a sign. And then they said, like, oh, Travis. Like, you know, and they started talking about, like, oh. So, like, they were like, oh, that's a weird way to announce that your dick's still working or something like that. <laughs> and it was just the whole thing was really funny. but like, Because <laughs> they do a whole, like, bit where they play these dumb fucks on stage you know that right right yeah yeah but wow wasn't the most hard i've been in m much crazier mosh pits but the show was amazing and, so, and it was like all the nostalgia unlocked yes i nearly cried i was like blink Two was the first album i ever bought was a <gasps> blink Two album really yeah no way, wait, wait. And I one? felt so cool because there was a parental advisory on the cover it was the mm -hmm. nurse one no way With, yeah. yeah i bought it at kmart does kmart still exist no, I think <gasps> they closed all their doors. And that was my grandma's favorite store. It was hard for us. Damn. R.I.P. <laughs> to a real one. But I loved it. I, I definitely got emotional a couple times. And like childhood dream come true. Tom left the band. I didn't think I'd ever get to do this. Like, Should we go, Rai? Yeah. Yes, obviously we should go. I wonder if they're uh, coming to, if they've already come to Denver or not. Maybe we could come when they're here. Let's look into it. Are you done with Chris? I guess so. Fine. See you later. Bye, Chris. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I just can't believe he was there. And then he's like DMing us on Instagram, like his real time clips and of Courtney. And I was just like, wow, Chris is at like a big event. This is like everything. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Chris is crazy. crazy. I was like, of course. So Chris congratulations is there. to them. Lately, I feel like I've seen a lot, and maybe it's not any more than usual, but I feel like maybe my Instagram Explore page is just favoring it. But oh, I have like a sneeze coming on. Don't oh, do it. No, this is Don't awful. No, but it's like, it's the awful tickle in my nose. Uh, <sighs> Whoa, that was so intense. It hurt. Um, <laughs> all of these couples that like were told by their fertility doctors that they're never going to have babies by themselves anymore and they like go through this long IVF process and then kind of put that to the back burner and then like a little while later they're like oh and we're pregnant yeah um so and that's what happened with Courtney like I think in one of the recent episodes she was like we're done trying the IVF it's just like such yeah. an emotional roller coaster and I'm done putting my body and myself through this and now they're pregnant which is so exciting and just so cool yeah I nothing mean, you have nothing really... to say <laughs> You haven't tried yet. I mean, I'm I haven't tried, but I'm also like so upset and jealous with everyone who is pregnant. I'm like, well, good for you guys. But you're not okay. I, you drive me bonkers. I know because it's you're a not confusing even confusing okay. place to be. It's a confusing. It is a confusing place, place, to, be. place to be. Um, where I did get on the Kardashians is Chloe just like hammering in that she's not connected to her baby. Yeah, and I, like. On one hand, I so appreciate her honesty. honesty. And I'm like, you're gonna, because I know there's like a lot of couples, like I've had friends in the past where like one of the parents isn't immediately identifying. And then it's like, but to be on such a public platform, such as the Kardashians and say that so openly and freely knowing the world's gonna judge you. I was like, on one hand, I was like, wow, that honesty. But then on the other hand, I was like, that, that kid's, kid's gonna grow gonna up see this. one day and like see this featured prominently and i just don't know that i could teeter that line i mean good for her on obviously she showcases that she's a good mom without having to say it like you can witness it in real time with the cameras and like she even ends that segment saying like being a mom is one of the greatest joys of my life and i'm so like lucky and blessed to be on this journey and have them but i couldn't believe how adamantly she was just standing in like i still am not fully connected to this child i was mm -hmm. just like oh they're gonna see that one day what are you doing chloe stop yeah but also like i i feel very heavily like what you said at the top of like this is probably going to be helpful to a lot of people like you may not feel bonded but the bond can grow and come and mm -hmm. I do know that, like, for the longest time, people didn't even talk about postpartum depression. 
and nobody which would wild. even which is wild so like a woman would have a baby and if she wasn't a bright and shiny smiling person she was medicated or shock therapy like it's it's nuts to me and this is like recently in our history like women were not granted the grace and dignity of honesty about what happens mentally and physically after having a child because like the chemicals running through your body because of evolution and all of these things are like crazy they're crazy making and it's really hard and so I do think it's really positive and was once hella frowned upon to have feelings after having a baby that weren't just positive Mm -hmm. but to have community of women who can express their feelings honestly about what's going on I think is a lot more helpful than trying to like shove it down and pretend like it's not happening because I've heard dads even say like it took me a minute to bond with my kids so if a dad can hear this from a and that doesn't mean there's never a bond or there's never going to be the no. strongest bond ever. Yeah. It's like, it's a huge change in a person's life. And I haven't been there yet, so I don't know. But you can only imagine that it's a like, huge, it's a shock. It's like, it's like a flip is switched and you're like, wait, what the fuck? Like, I don't know how to make sense of this. And it's easier, I think, for a person whose body has gone through a physical change to acknowledge the shift because it's like it happened on their body but even some women Mm -hmm. who do carry their own children don't have that immediate bond but so i do think that there is power in saying you can build the bond yeah and yeah it's different for everyone and it just is what it is i don't uh i mean yeah i don't know but it's like honestly it's a heroic move that and it's a choice you're making not only for yourself but for your child so i get what you're saying and i agree with it too yeah was that a Shane Dawson cameo? Yeah, he just walked in. Clickbait. Uh, oh, so, somebody's <laughs> ringing the doorbell. Shane, can you open the door for, in California? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bring us up to speed on this Spotify executive calling H&M fucking grifters. Okay. I didn't know what that means, so I had to Google it. Do you want me to explain the word first before we go into it? Or do you yeah, want to start sure with the story? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people struggle with the word grifter. You knew. Okay. You tell me exactly what it means verbatim right now. A grifter is like a con artist, a person who like goes from town to town pulling cons to pull in cash. Okay. So you're smarter than me. Yeah. Someone who <laughs> swindles people out of money through fraud. If there's one type of person you don't want to trust, it's a grifter. Someone who cheats others out of money. And in my opinion. So, okay. Well, tell the story first. So um, I don't know if everybody remembers like Megan and Harry were like Deuce's royal family. We're going to fend for ourselves. And then they got these huge like multi-million dollar deals to the tune of like $20 million from Spotify, I think. And like Netflix. Well, I think they got $80 million from Netflix, like a crazy amount of money for their like entertainment empire where they're going to make content about mental health and shit and um when you sign those kinds of contracts they pay you piecemeal they're not just throwing you you know 20 million dollars like go crazy they Mm -hmm. they pay you in increments and it's for work delivered to some degree and there's exit strategies like if the first season isn't a hit or returning a profit for the company they have a way out so does the talent if it's not working for them yeah so um megan's show on spotify has been canceled because she did not deliver on what she said she would for the first season and to the tune of like one of the ceos of the company or is he a ceo or he's an executive Mm -hmm, an executive one of the executives on his own podcast on spotify called the royal cup couple fucking grifters and he's so sick of them because all they're doing is just like selling these stories about how much they hate the royal family while saying we don't want to talk about it well then don't take 80 million fucking dollars to talk about it Uh, well and the thing is i think we need to back it up a second to begin with they shouldn't have been handing out million dollar multi-million dollar deals to these people anyways because they weren't offering anything to begin with they have a crazy story but they're not actually going to tell it and we all knew they're not going to tell it it's going to be this scripted version of a fake reality that is like uh, that's not reflective of their real life whatsoever and we all knew they weren't going to deliver it's crazy well, everyone talk. This is the thing that's funny to me is they're like, no, like Megan's like a hell of authentic. Like, watch. This I don't think part- people are saying that anymore. 
Well, let me finish. So she does this oh. part in the documentary that was released on Netflix that I wa- that I hate watched all of. <laughs> and you just see her like throwing Archie his first birthday. And they're just like so fucking DIY. Like she's blowing up the balloons and she's putting up the streamers. And it's like when I think about it, like that's not a fucking party, bro. You just set up an Instagram photo shoot for your infant that you don't want in the public eye so that you could take a picture of him in what looks like a photo of a party. But it's literally just like, that's an Instagram photo. Like, you're doing social media marketing for your baby right now. <laughs> like, even that's contrived. Oh. Like, what? Okay, Megan. Super cute. And yeah, every mom and does it. Like, I'm not shitting on photo shoots for your kids. Every mom does it. But don't act like this was her throwing, like, a shoestring birthday party in fucking Tyler Perry's Montecito mansion while Beyonce is calling and bringing Blue Ivy over for a play date. Like, you're not run-of-the-mill, down-to-earth people. Megan, you can't even speak without sounding affected. Like... <laughs> And she doesn't even do her own interviews on the podcast. She comes in and records a, an, an intro and an outro and then she leaves. And other like people who've come on as guests are like, yeah, the person who interviewed me was very well informed. And it's like, so it's not the Duchess? Like, what the fuck? They're grifters. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Whatever works for them. I'm sure they're uh, <laughs> just rolling in that money, you know, if they want. Hopefully they can keep finding places to grift. <laughs> um okay you wrote charlie pruth wrote a song while fucking yeah people magazine for some reason this week felt like it was necessary to run a headline that charlie pluth came up with a song while fucking in the middle of fucking stopped fucking recorded a sound of himself fucking and then put use it in a song later and honestly i fucking hated charlie pluth for his weird fucking tiktok shit before and i hate i like even- them i kind of like them like if I'm like I honestly I do think he like has a knack for music and creating beats like I do find it interesting that he can make something out of nothing and he's pretty charismatic I mean yeah but I also hate him the way I hate Megan Merkel where he's like wait what's that sound oh and then he like does like I don't like it it feels disingenuous okay, well, let me bring you in on the story what he if you're said getting he... fucked and Shane's like, hold on. Uh, well, uh, you've you've uh, never had a great idea while doing something where you had to stop and write it in your notes so you can remember it because great ideas are fleeting. Sometimes you'll be like, oh, I had a great idea while I was doing this. And you kind of learn. Uh, you got to write it down. To- like, I'll leave the gym to write an idea down. But if my if I'm getting fucked, I'm not like, hold that thought. I, I mean, what if it's your best idea ever? Is it a hit song? I haven't heard the song yet. I haven't heard the song either, but I guarantee you it's not because name a Charlie Pluth song right now. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can remember you? when Morgan remember when Morgan said she had a distaste for Megan Trainer and you got all upset Dude, and you were like, We can't hate people. You're doing the exact same thing to like I would say the male equivalent of Megan Trainer. I don't know that we can call I think we can. I think that's almost but exactly that's because what Because you is. hate Megan Trainer. Uh, no, I'm just saying I think they're the equivalent of like Do you think Charlie status Pluth- in <laughs> I'm asking Chris. Do you think Charlie Pluth and Megan Trainer are the equivalent of each other? I don't know enough about either of them. He's playing You're saying his name. You keep adding an L to his name. Pluth. What is his fucking name? Pluth. Pluth. I hate him so even more. He, it's a okay, dumb fucking listen. name. Okay, listen to the story. He said he looked at himself in the mirror while having sex. Saw <gasps> marks on his... Listen! Saw marks on his neck and a melody came to his head. So he stopped to make a voice memo. He said... I'm not captivated by the way I look, but I I know that I'm not ugly. So sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I'd be like, I really do have a nice butt. And he said, what's wrong with liking your features? I have really long arms and abnormally large hands. That's probably why I play piano. Even today I woke up and it's kind of fun to look at yourself naked and admire your body. Are you literally thinking that that excerpt is going to make me like Charlie Pluth more? Poof! That he's fucking while looking at himself in the mirror and then has to stop because he thinks he has a cute butt. And then he pulls out his phone while his dick is dripping in pussy juice and auto dictates to his phone. Self, you like looking at yourself in the mirror. Your butt's kind of cute. Then he puts his fucking phone down and goes back to having sex. Whatever works, you know. Who's saying that a lot of artists are, are, okay. I bet 98% of musical 
artists or pop stars have, uh, I would say like narcissistic tendencies such as this. I, cause there's like almost no pop star that I'm like, they would be a great friend to have, even if I right. love their music, because it is a very like, to romanticize your own life and experiences in that sort of way to be able to have uh, such a great sense of self to be able to command such a stage you do have to uh, think highly of yourself yeah I stand by it I think he's trash okay 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 I feel the same way that you felt when Morgan said she had a distaste for Megan Trainer. it's like we just don't need to be mean so you are admitting you don't like Megan Trainer. No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying I don't think we need to be trashing people. Fine. We don't need to be trashing people. But if you're fucking someone while looking at yourself in the mirror and then you stop fucking that person to leave a voice memo for yourself about how much you like the way you look naked. Well, he said it was you... a rebound and it was probably going nowhere to begin with. So he literally shit on the woman who was down to fuck him initially okay. in this article. So I thought this is a good segue to do something that I just think is inter interesting enough. We could, what, I know we have five minutes. Okay. We can get through this in five minutes. Uh, rating ourselves oh. and what features are our own best features. 10 out of 10, so, every single one. No, you can't give yourself a 10 out of 10 on everything. <laughs> yes, I can. Really? <laughs> well, give, tell me. And you're give, mad at Charlie Pluth. Well, I'm not stopping in the middle. Oh, we're down to three minutes. Okay, we're fine. Just come okay. on. What are the features that we're, what are the, what are the things? What are the categories? I mean, overall. Overall. And then favorite feature. I'm fucking great. I think I'm oh fucking gosh. great. I'm super honest. I love to a fault. And I'm loyal, but sometimes if I think you're wrong, I don't know if I could be loyal to it. And I think and that's looks. admirable as well. And looks. I would say I'm like a seven and a half. Okay, so 10 out of 10 personality, seven and a half look. Yeah, seven and a half, middle of America, seven and a half. Los Angeles, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like an Iowa. No, Iowa's got some hot people. I'm like a Wisconsin nine. Well, what? Stop dividing everyone. <laughs> stop. You're isolating I'm us like from Michigan. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> and I would say, I would say I'm, I would about the same. Seven and a half. Personality, eight and a half. You know? I think you're hotter. I, annoy my I think you're hotter than a seven and a half for men. It's, a, uh, it's not. I think there's a lot a of guys with great teeth, better bodies. <laughs> Taller height, you know, like I think I, I'm solid at seven and a half and I think personality eight and a half. I do sometimes even annoy myself with my own thinking patterns. I'm like, God, just fucking stop, brother. So <laughs> I'm not delusional. To think I'm a 10 out of 10. I'm sometimes annoying. Um, I think but I do out have of 10. great qualities. I would say uh, some of my favorites are eyes and beautiful eyes, baby blues. Sparkly, some of my defaults whites. are my hairline, but we're working on it. We got one minute. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for enjoying today's virtual episode of The Sip. Let us know if you agree with our ratings of ourselves in the comments below. Follow Lizzie and Chris on YouTube and social media. Chris just put out his first, uh, well, his like first video back on YouTube. Lizzie has a great Reels of Housewife series going on with me heavily featured. It's very fun. Some of our best work, might I add. Um, we'll be and doing we more episodes of those. They're coming. Yeah, we were going to film some today, but God had other plans. Crazy. Um, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and enjoying. We'll see you next week in person together. We love you very much. Uh, goodbye. And, and that's, that's the sip. And that's the sip. <sighs> Toodles. If God tells you not to get on a plane, don't do it. Cutting. Cutting. Cutting.